Whenever you're ready. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Brown, but I go by Lee because in all my years of primary school, people like to make up nicknames for me. Like uh, Liz Liz, that's one of my favorites. So in college, I decided to beat them at their own game. There was never a really a defining moment for me, for or a eureka moment for when I wanted to go into music. Um, it just eventually it just became the only option because I, in seventh grade, I really started practicing the cello more and enjoying the cello more, and it just became like, well, of course I want to do music. Why wouldn't I want to do music? It's really what brings me a lot of joy. You know, before that I'd wanted to go into creative writing and English and politics. Now, I would be a terrible politician because when I wanted to go into politics, it was like, you know that moment in a movie where like the epic soundtrack is playing behind the main character and they go, I want to stand on the steps of the United States Senate someday. Except I was in fifth grade and my voice is a lot higher and squeakier. And looking back on it, it just felt like I was just play acting for a camera that wasn't actually there. But I grew up in a family of all musicians and um, both my parents are both professional musicians and so I I like to say that music is my first language and English is my second because at around the time that I would have been starting to speak, that I was starting to speak, in fact, my parents enrolled me in this thing called kinder music, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bunch of, you know, one and two year olds banging away on little multicolored percussion instruments while a teacher tries to direct them to make rhythms. I was very stubborn. I did not want to make rhythms. I did not want to clap my babas, ba, 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 and um, the teacher despaired of me, my parents despaired of me, they thought I was tone deaf, but look at me now. I think one thing that I'd like people to know about me is that I want to learn. That's not an uncommon thing for people to want to do to keep learning, but I think it's really how I want to learn that I want people to understand. Yesterday, some of my friends and I went down to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and in the medieval exhibit on the second floor, if you go to the left of the stairs, you should visit this, there's this cloister from a monastery in the 13th century. And there's all these, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's red and white marble. And one of my friends went up to one of these intricately carved columns, and he looked at it, and he went, wait, what's this? And there was this little engraved bee, and there were these two little circles beside it, and none of us could figure out what this thing was. But it was something that just even recently had a huge impact on me because that is learning in its purest form, absolute curiosity. It was, it's what I want to do with my life, it's what I want to do with myself. I want to keep learning and I want to keep understanding things and finding things. And for most of my life, learning has been about knowledge for me. What can I know? What is one times one? What is two times two? What, are, what is the text of Shakespeare's 18th sonnet? Which, by the way, I know. But that's not important. What's important is that you want to know these things and that you feel as though your life would be incomplete without this. And that's how I want people to judge me. Not by who I am, but by who I want to be.